Welcome everyone. Today I have a end game study for you. Specifically, we're talking about queen and rook versus queen and rook end games. Now, I did get a comment for this, which is why I'm making the video. Um, and these end games tend to be draws. You have relatively equal material because sometimes you have extra pawns or something. Um, but yeah, generally you have equal material. It seems like it's going to be a draw. But like anything in chess, there are special cases. And so I did some research. I found some of those special cases in real games, and I'm here to share them with you. Um, so we can go ahead and maybe apply this to your game. Um, so if you, you know, find yourself in one of these positions or a similar position, you'll know that you have a winnable position. Now here, black just promoted. Uh, here's our first game. And it, this is winnable for white. And the, the reason that this is winnable for white is because if you'll notice, both of these pieces here are kind of aligned. Um, they, they all control the same rank here being the first rank. Um, and although they do have uh, some unique diagonals or files, for the most part, they don't control as much as they should be. And because of that, uh, or because of that lack of control, and because of this addition of a pawn, white has this beautiful attacking idea, which, which is queen uh, to g6 check. The king can go to two spots. Let's say, let's start with this move. Uh, well, now you have rook to e4. Once again, the queen and, and, and the rook here for black just aren't doing a whole lot um, when it comes to kind of this section of the board, which is where white is deciding to attack. Um, which is very smart. And so the king is kind of trapped between all of these white pieces, and that is what led um, to mate. So the king obviously goes down. We have queen to g4. King goes down further. Rook e2. Uh, king goes down even further. And now we have mate on g2. Um, if we go back, however, I did mention that the king can obviously go to h5, which is actually what was played in the real game. Um, and here you, you also have mate. Again, starting with rook to e4, king moves down, queen to g4, and again, like last time, you have rook to e2 uh, check, the king moves down even further, and you have mate on g2. And so very similar idea of using the fact that these two pieces aren't doing much when it comes to this side of the board where you're attacking, and therefore you can kind of control um, all of these squares with relative freedom, um, and the king is just, the king really can't do much here. Here is another game that we have, and this is where we're going to start to make an observation as to in which positions can you mate and in which positions is it just a draw. Um, what you'll notice is that in this position, it's completely equal material. Black does threaten to promote a lot faster than, than white does, but it is equal material. Um, white does this check here uh, while promoting. If the rook takes, you can just promote your up material, you're gonna win. And whatever the king does, you're always going to be able uh, to attack even further. So for example, queen d3 uh, or d4, you can just make a queen on a1, uh, and then you're just going to, you know, continue pushing for, for mate. So for example, we can actually continue that line uh, a little bit further. You're going to have mate uh, really quickly um, in this position. If instead the king decides to move to e3, say, well, now you can do check. The king moves, let's say, d4. You have check here. Uh, king moves e5, maybe. Uh, you can just take the pawn, and you're going to realize that you're going to be mating. Um, you're going to be mating basically whatever you do. Uh, I mean, in this position, you can actually instead of taking the pawn, you can even play rook e2, and that's probably even better uh, because if you take the pawn, the king does manage to escape and get closer to the queen and the rook, or at least that file for protection. And that's what it all comes down to: how protected is the king? Here, you'll notice the queen. If we make a box around it. Um, like this, you'll notice the king is right here in the middle of the box. And, and because of that, and because of also the fact that the queen is, is really out here um, in the middle of nowhere, and the rook, although it is on this file, um, you can't really do anything with the rook because of how this king is very unprotected, you do have mate here. And so as opposed to maybe this king where the queen is watching for it, um, and more than that, just none of these pieces are really threatening this king here. And so because of that, you'll notice that what it comes down to in both of the examples is whether or not the kings are safe, which is why if you get to a position where there's queens and rooks on the board, these are powerful pieces. You need to make sure that your king is close to your king and rook. And so that kind of allows you to then play better moves. So for example, if black starts to give you check, you might want to decide, or sorry, it's white to move here. Let's say white goes here. If, if black starts to give you check, you might, you know, you might want to decide to try to run away over here to the queen um, because that can give you protection. And similarly, 
um, if your opponent is starting to attack, or, or sorry, if you're you're wanting to attack, then you're going to try to attack um, and bring the king into a box where it's even farther away um, from any of its pieces. And so that is what it comes down to when we, we have king, um, or sorry, queen and rooks against queen and rooks endgames. Hopefully this video did give you some um, examples of cases where these are winning uh, positions for a player. Um, and hopefully you can then apply that to your endgames and become a better player. Make sure you guys do subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.